Good morning. Good morning. We welcome everyone as we gather to lift up our prayers and praises to our triune God. Um, just one announcement. Uh, if you would like to help with diapers and wipes for Lutheran Family and Children's Services, you have a couple more Sundays to bring those. And then on Father's Day, we will be sending them out. We continue then with our opening hymn, Holy, 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 it is number 507. <laughs> Forgive us our sins, 
and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him, because he has shown us his mercy to us. I have said the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon my soul to Sheol. Or let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him, because he has shown his mercy. And there was evening and there was morning the second day. 
And the God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and he, the gathered waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing their seed according to their kinds, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the sky <clears throat> to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark seasons and days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the expanse of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the day and the night and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was the evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the water teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea, and every living and moving thing with which the water teems according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number, and fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, livestock, creatures that move along the ground, and wild animals each according to its kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, and in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit was seeded. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all the creatures that move on the ground, Everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing, so on the seventh day he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating all that he had done. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Today, for our confession of faith, we will be using the Athanasian Creed. We will be
breaking it into two sections. Just a reminder that it uses the word Catholic with a small c. And if you look on the back page at the bottom, there's a statement that I'd like to read just to remind us. This is the Catholic faith that is what the true church of all times and all places confesses about our God and his salvation. So when we're talking about <coughs> Catholic with a small c faith, we're talking about the faith that the whole church of all times has confessed about our triune God. Whoever desires to be saved must above all hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep its own and undivided will, without doubt, perish eternal. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is one. The glory equal, the majesty equal eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son Which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. 
this man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge. And you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope, because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your holy ones see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried. And his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and saw that God had promised him on hope that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Continue with the Athanasian Creed. Having focused on the person, we now look at the work of God. But it was also necessary for every lasting salvation that one faithfully believed the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God. Begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages. And he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of the person. Whereas the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. And this is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. Continue with the Alleluia. 
him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Jesus comes and joins us in our doubt-filled minds. 
our despair clouded hearts, our diseased bodies, our broken world. And he grounds us in what is fundamental, what is the heart and core of our life in Jesus. Jesus is authority. Jesus is gifts. Jesus is presence. If there's one thing we've learned from these past few years, it's how little control we really have in life. This is a painful lesson to learn. After all, we like to be in control, in charge. Like Frank Sinatra said, we like to do it my way. We're no different from our first parents, Adam and Eve, foolishly thinking that we have some kind of rule, authority, and wisdom that's all our own, apart from God. Yet, Scripture reveals that so-called human authority and control is one painful, sad episode after another. Cain murders Abel. Abraham passes off his wife Sarah as his sister. Jacob steals the birthright from his brother Esau. Joseph's brothers sell him into slavery. Israel fashions a golden calf for an idol. David kills Uriah and takes Uriah's wife for his own. What's truly remarkable in all this, however, is not the depths of sin to which our sinful use of authority leads us, but the greater depth, the far greater depth of the mercy of God in Jesus. While we use our authority selfishly, Jesus, the one who has all authority over heaven and earth, uses it not for his own sake, for hours. Jesus teaches and forgives sin with his authoritative, life-giving word. Jesus places himself under the earthly authority of Pontius Pilate to take our punishment, sin, and death. Jesus is given the authority to lay down his life and take it back up again, not for himself, for you. Jesus exercises his authority and his love for you. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all peoples. How? By baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and by teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. Jesus' authority gives way to Jesus' gifts, baptism, teaching, his holy words, his holy gifts for his disciples, for his church, for you. Jesus' gifts are fundamental to who we are as his people. We are baptized into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is, of course, a profound mystery that the eternal God, the Holy Trinity, would work for, save, and promise to dwell with us in a very personal way in baptism. Yet that's precisely what he does. When you're baptized into that holy name, you're baptized into everything that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has done for you. The Father's merciful creation and the sending of His Son. Jesus' is birth, Jesus' is perfect life of obedience to the Father. His life laid down for you. His rising from the dead for you. His ascending and sitting at the right hand of His Father. His sending of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's life-giving breath that fills you and makes you a new 
new creation. It's all there in that holy name into which you have been baptized. This is also why we take the time today to confess the Athanasian Creed. For the life of the baptized is a life to be taught through our Lord's words, receiving and confessing His words, living in His words, that we would love others as He has loved us. I suspect that when Jesus' disciples heard Jesus' words, they wondered how they were going to do all this. It all sounds so overwhelming. Yet Jesus promises, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Jesus promises his presence, along with his gracious authority and his life-giving gifts. As the disciples went from Galilee to Jerusalem to Samaria to the ends of the earth, as they faced persecution, imprisonment, and martyrdom, Jesus' words remain, I am with you always. Jesus promises the same to us as well. I am with you in the face of a pandemic or shutdown, in the face of a recession, in the face of racial injustice and civil unrest, in the face of uncertainty and fear, in doubt and despair, in sin, in death. I am with you always. Despite all appearances to the contrary, the risen Jesus is Lord of all. You have his authority, his gift, his presence, his promise. I am with you always. Amen. Now may the peace, the love, and the presence of our Lord strengthen and keep you now and forever in the one true faith in our triune God. Amen. We continue with our hymn of response. God himself is present, number 907.
For God has promised to hear the prayers of his people and give us all things according to his word and promise. Holy, holy, holy Lord of sorrow, we bless your name. You have called us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Guard your church, purchased with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Keep her in the true faith without error, schism, or compromise until that day when you welcome her home as your spotless bride. As the Holy Spirit hovered over the face of the deep, you uttered your word, and the world was created. In the waters of holy baptism, you have spoken our names and declared us righteous. You have drawn us to Jesus, the light of life, and saved us. Let his light now shine through us that others may see our good works and give glory to you. Let us praise the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to you, O blessed Trinity. Heavenly Father, as you planned long before the world began, deliver us in Jesus that we may be your own and live according to your commands all our days. In this day and in this time, Raise up for your church godly men to serve her as pastors and faithful teachers and church workers to make known your saving gospel. Raise up faithful servants who will heed your call and serve to the best of their ability wherever you place them. And the blessed sacrament your son gives his body as the bread of heaven and his blood as the cup of salvation. Help us to receive this blessed sacrament with faith and show forth the fruits of the Spirit in lives of faith, repentance, and goodness. Let us bless the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to you, O blessed Trinity. Gracious Father, we thank you for your abiding presence in all times of life, especially in our homes by your word. Protect our youth from all temptation and sin. Lead broken families to confess their wrongs to you and to each other, and then to forgive each other, as in Jesus you forgive them. Open the hearts of all married people, including Glenn and Alice, as they celebrate their anniversary, that their love for each other may never grow weary, but deepen and grow with every joy and sorrow shared. Be with the elder ways they cope with physical limitations and weaknesses. Give them spiritual strength to cling to your mercies, which are new every morning. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to you, O blessed Trinity. Almighty Father, in government and law, you work to establish and preserve order, protecting the weak and fostering godly virtue. Bless our present, our government. All who make, administer, and judge our laws. Bless all who defend us in the armed forces, including Hunter and Addison, and aid us in the emergency and medical field. Hinder those who oppress any people with mistruth, violence, or fear. Let us bless the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to you, O blessed Trinity. Mighty Father, as you continue to uphold your creation, be with us as we still suffer under the curse of sin. By your will, give healing to the sick, comfort to the lonely, relief to those whose hearts are heavy with grief, and aid to those who are in any need, including Ethan, Roy, Alice, Alice, Brad, Diane, Paul, Pam, Carolyn, Debbie, Reverend Rover, Heather, Jeremiah, Danny, Brian, Dan, Randy, Earl, Carolyn, Larry, all affected by warfare and disasters, and all whom we now mention before you in our hearts. Sustain us unto the last when you put an end to the curse of sin. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to you, O blessed Trinity. O Holy Trinity, in your awesome creation you provide the seed, the soil, the water, the seasons of the year, and the cycle of nature. Be with those who till, plant, and care for the fields and gardens that they may be strengthened by your constant presence in all their labors. Give us favorable weather that our farming and gardening efforts may be fruitful. Keep
keep us so very insensitive to the needs of our fathers and their families, giving them a fair return for their efforts. Bless also all those who work in related agricultural businesses. Lead us to give thanks for your gracious care of our lives. Let us bless the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory be to you, O blessed Trinity. All these things and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us, Father, for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ, through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, both now and forevermore. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is Abide with Dearest Jesus. It's number 919. We wish you God's blessings as we now.